Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining this series of Lunch with Alums. Today, we are really excited to have Dr. Nora Zetja here with us. She graduated from Country Day in 2006 um, and has done lots of really interesting things since her graduation. So we are really looking forward to chatting with you today, Nora. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's great to have you. you as well. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we should just go back to where it all began. Um, Country Day Upper School. Tell us a little bit about what activities you were involved in, um, some of the clubs you were in, where you liked to hang out in the building. Um, just kind of like bring us into who you were as an upper school student. Um, hmm. <laughs> Brings back some memories, yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, lots uh, to do at school, actually. Every so often when I talk to my friends here in Germany and tell them about it, they're amazed by all of the activities that actually the yeah. school offered. Um, so I think kind of thinking back, one of the bigger things that, that stood out to me was <laughs> being part of the outdoors club, Yeah, which I guess was uh, <laughs> on one hand, bit of uh, unusual, I think, as people were kind of grooming their um, uh, resumes for college and everything, but mm -hmm. I just uh, thought it was an amazing opportunity to go and explore different parts of the states and wherever else we travel. So yeah. that um, I did for all four years, which is really fun. Um, having kind of an interest in getting the full-on American experience. I was also a <laughs> yeah. cheerleader for the entire time. That's that right. I was, yes, I totally I remember there. that. Yep. <laughs> um, but also kind of some other sports. I did a um, bit of baby soccer and uh, mm -hmm. snowboarding. <laughs> snowboarding. Okay. It, and you had, a, you had a brother at school too, right? So um, did he yeah, do the snowboarding club too? Yeah, both of my brothers were at school, okay. so we um, used to drive out to Pine Knob together mm -hmm. in my oldest brother's pickup truck. <laughs> I love so it. That was always a fun it. activity, um, yeah, getting out there and kind of, uh, yeah, a little bit of a, not the first thing you would connect to Michigan is going right, snowboarding no. after exactly. school. Yeah, so you actually came to Country Day um, in middle school. And I think one of the most interesting parts about your story is just that you joined us from another country. And so for any students who are about to join Country Day, who are also maybe moving from a different country or who have, um, you know, in the past few years, what advice do you have for any students who are coming from abroad um, to Country Day? Um, you know, the nice thing, um, that I would just generally brush across the U.S. is that uh, it's a very welcoming culture. And so um, that I think was then amplified by the fact that Country Day is a very kind of open school and very um, warm and welcoming towards all cultures. And mm -hmm. so um, I would really just say sort of to keep an open mind, uh, know that you're going to be working quite hard to, yeah. get to maybe the same level of uh, some of the students that have been there longer and, and catch up, uh, depending also on how well you're speaking the language at the point that you're getting yeah. there. Yeah, that's true. Um, no, but it's really, uh, I think, as I mentioned, there are so many things that Country Day offers that it is such a unique opportunity and um, it would be a waste not to take full advantage. So even just testing out things that wherever you came from, you'd say, well, I don't know if I would yeah. necessarily go into that or have mm -hmm. an interest, just try it out because there's so many things you can then switch over to. Right, so true. I love that advice. So when you were a junior and a senior at Country Day, you were obviously starting to look into colleges and you ended up going to Duke. So what factors were you considering in your college search? Um, was there anything in particular that stood out to you about Duke that really made you want to go? Um, were there any other schools that you were considering? Um, so I guess this is where I have to be uh, pretty, pretty honest and open because truthfully, I don't think I really knew at the time um, what factors to even look at, yeah. uh, especially having come from a different country. I didn't totally, really yeah. know a lot of the details around how does one area of the states compare to another area. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think 
but for me, um, thankfully, school sort of came to me easily. So mm -hmm. there was, um, of course, some expectation of it needing to be either an Ivy League or some other yeah. kind of school that um, I should go to. And so I looked at sort of the whole, pretty much all of them, I think. Okay. Um, and it was more of a kind of gut feeling that I, I went with at that point in terms of okay. um, what am I interested in or okay. um, how do the cities speak to me. Mm -hmm. But I should say at that point, I think I should have taken into account more that Country Day in Michigan and kind of the area that we lived in is pretty unique because it is a, a melting pot of cultures, but mm -hmm. one that is, um, in my mind, very integrated and very um, and extremely diverse. And that was sort of what I took for granted when yeah. I then looked at different schools and didn't realize that having that experience is actually something I really enjoyed and would have liked to continue. Yeah. And to me, actually, Duke didn't end up really fitting into that picture because it ended up being a much more Southern school than yes. I had expected. That's a great point, and, yeah. And with a lot less diversity than, than I was used to from mm -hmm. Country Day and from how we grew up. And so um, that, I think, is something to take into consideration. When you are looking at colleges kind of where are you actually coming from what's your experience been so yeah. far and can you just assume some of, some of the things that you enjoy about that experience to be the same elsewhere i love that i think that's really good advice and it's so interesting that you found duke to be that way because i think you're right like it is you you kind of see it as a very diverse place and and very cosmopolitan almost just because you think that there's all these people coming from all over which there are but you know, being in the South definitely has its. Yeah, and, and how the yeah. groups mingle. I think mm -hmm. that is, um, that can differ very uh, largely in these different uh, areas that you're in. Yeah, that's a great point. So you actually ended up leaving Duke and going back to Germany, right, to complete your mm -hmm. degree. And also, was it like a simultaneous medical school? Um, yeah, as so well. um, in Europe, you actually go straight into medical school, so you okay. skip undergrad, <laughs> which is uh, cool. kind of nice. Um, so it kind of, there were multiple factors that influenced me ultimately leaving Duke, but from a um, personal standpoint, it was my family having mostly moved back. Right. And then also, as I said, it, it kind of wasn't the ideal fit, so I actually considered going to... Um, going to switch over to UPenn because my older brother was there and kind okay. of figured that would probably be a more fitting experience. But ultimately, yeah. I realized that it would make sense to kind of just go directly to Europe yeah. and doing med school immediately. Okay. And um, the good thing about the med school that I went to is that it has um, somewhat of a collaboration partnership with the Mayo Clinic. And so Very cool. it had us doing essentially a dual degree. So I had to do the U.S. boards along with the European examination so that I still okay. had sort of that window open to go back. Yes. Okay. So when you're, when, when you decided to go to medical school, how did, did you always know that you wanted to be a doctor or was that something you kind of realized later? Like, yeah. How, tell us how you like came to that. Yeah. I think um, for me, it was kind of a um, on one hand, a strengths and interests uh, assessment. And actually, I think Country Day does kind of a good job of showing mm -hmm. you so many different facets and, right. and uh, subjects that you can study. And then you sort of see from there, what am I good at and what am I interested in? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I um, wanted to make sure that whatever I do, I can actually have somewhat of an impact with what I do. And um, mm -hmm. so my biggest interests were probably always foreign languages and sciences. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of, between the two, I figured with sciences, I could have a little bit more um, uh, of an impact, do a little bit more with that in the field than thereafter, mm -hmm. than um, maybe I thought of at, at the time with any foreign languages that I could have. Right. Seen. Okay. So after medical school, I'm assuming you did like a fellowship with Mayo Clinic, right? Um, I did my like thesis there. So okay. I went to the Mayo Clinic for the research for it. Got it. Okay. So then you and Tanvi, um, and for anybody who, you know, 
for future viewers, Tanvi also is a Country Day alum who graduated with Nora in 2006, which I think is so cool that you guys founded this company together. It's awesome. So how did you decide that you were going to do this? What was the need you were trying to fill in creating this company? And what is it like to be a female founder of a health company um, and, and, and having that like entrepreneurship pathway? Um, lots of good questions. So, uh, it's some of it in terms of why we ended up founding it was on one hand, just from a personal perspective, um, Tandy and I had stayed friends all throughout, um, right. our time after high school and saw quite a lot of each other for the fact that we weren't <laughs> living on the same continent anymore. Yeah. Um, and so we were at the same point coming from different careers, but both wanting to change something mm -hmm. um, in our careers and um, had talked about potentially doing something together. And so um, the idea for what we're now actually doing essentially stemmed from them, my work as a doctor, because I was pretty shocked even throughout medical school and then seeing it uh, in practice as well. I was pretty uh, depressed almost by the ultimate if you want to call it that, customer experience of any patient. So um, okay. the healthcare experience is really pretty, one, daunting for any patient. Um, but throughout that whole process, that can be extremely scary and, and painful and, and stressful. Mm -hmm. Really aren't supported a lot. And, um, and if they're supported, it's only very um, incrementally and then at, at only certain points in the journey but there's very little continuous support that they receive and so that's kind okay. of where our idea for a company came from um, to use technology in order to support patients on their care journey when they're not in front of a doctor okay and, um, I would say just kind of from an experience perspective actually I get asked that a lot, how it is to be a, a female founder um, yeah. in the medical space. I have to say, I don't think, um, I think the, the bigger variable in terms of like being a founder in, in, in medical space versus elsewhere is really that industry that you find yourself in, because I really haven't seen, and maybe I just am naive to it, but I haven't really seen any difference between our path founding a okay. company versus any guy that founded one, yeah. um, the challenges end up being the same. And, same. and there's yeah. really, there's little, I think in traditional medicine and the hierarchies that you have in a hospital, it's actually, it would have been tougher for me as a female, Got it. but uh, founding, it's actually, it seems to be a, a level playing field. And then yeah. that, um, it is tough mm -hmm. <laughs> and for anyone in the field, just because you need a, uh, a lot of patients yeah. and I don't think neither Tanvi nor I really were equipped with that at any point <laughs> in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually it's probably a good thing because it makes you want to like get stuff done. So yeah. um, what advice would you have for students who want to found their own companies, whether or not it's in the medical space or not? Um, well, I think starting out kind of figure out, um, do you want to, do the path or go on that path by yourself or do you want to have a partner in it and um, really figure out with your partner um, if you are sort of on the same level have respect for each other and have an open um, dialogue and are able to say whatever is on your mind immediately and in whatever yes. form it comes out and then when you when you actually think about the company um, I, I think country day is, is a good starting point just because you're used to a lot of stress and right. doing a lot of things simultaneously and really mm -hmm. being tested in your just intelligence, I guess, on a daily yeah. basis and not just intelligence, but also sort of emotional intelligence and um, mm -hmm. dealing with, with people of different cultures, of different backgrounds, et cetera. And so um, I think it's, if somebody's thinking about doing it, I would highly encourage it. I think uh, you just have to be mindful of the fact that it is tiring, it is stressful, mm -hmm. and you are going to have to work extremely hard, but it's also extremely rewarding. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, if, if folks are interested in, in going that route, certainly um, 
lots of support from <laughs> from my side and yeah it's always yeah. good to stay a little bit um kind of an idealist and just assume that it'll go really well because you're going to need a yeah. ton of confidence going that route. That. <laughs> yeah okay so just to kind of bring your company like into the current um current events conversation i guess um i think you know in the wake of george floyd being murdered we've seen lots of uprisings all over the world and um not only to combat police brutality but also to shed light on systemic inequity and systemic racism and i think the medical field is one space in particular where this really plays out um just given like the access that people have to high quality medical care or high quality patient care. Um, and so I'm just curious, like what do you see, how do you see your role as a doctor in working to dismantle some of these systems? And then how does um, your company, how have you guys responded to this? Or, you know, I'm assuming you've also been doing a lot of these things already. So sort of give me your take on, on what's going on right now and how medicine plays into that. Absolutely. And um, to start off, I would say that as while I was still a practicing physician, I actually was really frustrated by the fact that yeah. there was very little I could do. I was kind of stuck in that system. And so um, I couldn't do much to maneuver out of it right. um, in that role. And so that's why I'm actually happy with the, the role that Tommy and I have now, because we can start um, moving towards more equality in, in the healthcare system, because ultimately, medicine at least the way that i've seen it in the us the way that i've seen it in germany is kind of a two class system so yes if you have money that means you get better health which is mm -hmm. just a horrible thing mm -hmm. um and i mean i think we all agree that everyone ultimately should be treated equally and mm -hmm. to the same standard and quality of care but it is important to know that we are not all the same so it means that treatments have to differ between different people. And right. the problem here is that a ton of the studies, and this is also where some of these issues come from, a ton of studies um, were conducted ultimately on white middle-aged men. And mm. so there's actually kind of fun little articles around that, or absurd articles, where studies on like PMS and the contraceptive pill were done on men. <laughs> and really? The results were taken yeah. and, and just moved across the female populations. And so, Wow. Uh, that should give you pause. And <laughs> what we feel very strongly about in, in our company and just as we're looking at the landscape is that tech ultimately enables the collection mm -hmm. and the lab analysis of huge amounts of data. And that helps us to better understand individual treatment needs. And so once we understand individual treatment needs, we can also start predicting healthcare needs mm -hmm. and can move towards kind of just treating disease to preventing disease and mm -hmm. planning resources. So I'll, I'll give you a, a more concrete example. So if you have someone in South Africa that falls mm -hmm. ill with diabetes, basically a technology system that's fed with good and lots of data, mm -hmm. can, based on this person's demographic information, genetic, physiological, epigenetic data, um, predict the ideal treatment regimen for that patient. And so right. on a, popu a population level, you could ultimately predict kind of the likelihood of certain people falling ill with what illnesses they may fall ill with. And then um, also predict the associated medical resources that you need. So ultimately you can yeah. um, kind of make purchasing decisions and divide up the resources in a much more cost-effective way and in a much more um, in an equal way so that right. once you have that planning capability, you can say, well, we have this pot of money in the system, mm -hmm. so let's make sure we use it most effectively so that everyone gets a same standard and quality of care and will know how to treat these different individuals instead of just white middle-aged men. <laughs> yes, I love that. That's fascinating. That's so interesting. And I, I love what you said about how the predictive models would actually like allow treatments and things to be more equitable over time. I think that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, thank you for your insight on that. Um, so I think we have time for one more question. And I love this question. Dana Leone actually suggested that I ask this question to everyone that we interview. So I love it. So I will ask it to you. 
um, sitting where you are today, what advice would you give to 12th grade Nora um, about you know, how to approach um, the upcoming graduation and going to college and then just like how to think about life? Um, I think to me, it's, it sort of boils down to the same aspect um, and, and that would be balance. So <laughs> in country day, um, you're sort of taught to achieve, <laughs> and, which is a good thing. And yeah. um, I think um, it, for me, it always sort of became something to strive for. So whatever I did, I, there was some goal in mind sure um that you're moving towards and and working towards and that sort of motivated me to go to the next level and and i think it's inherently very good to have goals and to move towards something right but it's also really important not to make everything about achievement because ultimately you have to be enjoying the process of whatever you're doing as well mm -hmm. and you have to find ways where you can also just relax and so instead of kind of doing yoga or whatever you're doing in order to become a teacher or in order to mm -hmm. I don't know, be able to pull together like a Swiss army knife. You might mm -hmm. just want to do it because you enjoy the practice of it and mm -hmm. you want to relax. And so that same, that to me, I think now I, I see it a lot with work, but then um, in the past too, I've just seen the importance of friends and family. And so I think for anyone in in 12th grade, I would just say that it is so important to um, kind of maintain and care for your relationships with the people that are closest to you and make sure that you put time and effort towards that and mm -hmm. actually enjoy it instead of saying, oh, I need to see this person. But yeah. really take that time and, and give yourself that time instead of saying, well, how is this moving me towards a goal? Because ultimately, whatever you add in in counterbalancing all of your drive, mm -hmm. uh, that will get you that much further because it gives you so much more energy to um, really achieve whatever lofty goals you have set for yourself. Amazing. I love that advice. And the students are graduating today. So I think that that's oh, wow. very applicable. But wow, um, congrats yes, but thank you so much, Nora, for doing this. Um, it was great to see yeah. you and chat with you. And I'm so appreciative of your time. Um, if students are interested in learning more about you or about your career, is it okay if they reach out to you? They can yeah. do that through me. Okay, yeah, great. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. it. Great talking with you. Take you care. Too. Bye. Bye.